Welcome to the causation video for chapter 24. And the prompt is on causes and effects of economic globalization in the 20th century. So since it asks for causes and effects, I will probably plan on having these be my two paragraphs. You know, this will be body one and this will be body two. So let's look at my brainstorm and see how I put this together. All right, so I have causes on this slide, and these are all of these things are my ideas for causes of globalization. And I'm looking for ways that I can group them together into something that'll work in a paragraph, which means I probably won't be talking about all of them. And I'm going to go ahead and use my highlighter here and, and uh, find some commonalities. So this Bretton Woods conference, which results in the creation of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, are they have something in common. These are both Western nations encouraging economic globalization in order to expand trade and reduce barriers of trade between countries. So remember, this follows the policy of neoliberalism in which there is free trade, that means no tariffs or, or taxes on trade between countries, uh, and that taxes are lower, and that also it's a focus on private business rather than um, state-run or government-run businesses. So everything I have in green here I think has got something in common about, I guess philosophically, following neoliberalism and encouraging free trade. I've also identified a second theme that's popping out at me here, which has to do with the importance of technology down here. So shipping and oil uh, for the fuel for shipping and for planes and whatnot help to move goods around. And internet and communication is going to facilitate communication interaction and help to facilitate long range business, international business so that you can communicate. So these two things can work together and what I have highlighted in green my, can be sort of lumped together in a neoliberalism philosophy. And then what I have in yellow, I can also use focusing on, I guess I'll put it up here, on technology. And those two together, I need to kind of look at maybe a way that I can describe them. So let's use blue here. And down here, my cause, what I would put in a topic sentence, is this going to be leadership of capitalist nations. So you can see I've kind of picked a more generic term here, leadership, which can be used, I wanted that to be green, which can be used to talk about both kind of philosophical leadership and then maybe the practical technology leadership. So let's go to the next slide and see what I've got for analysis questions. Right, so on this slide I have a topic sentence that would establish that, that answer I had. My cause is leadership of capitalist nations. Remember, I'm going to need an answer in here. And I'm kind of leaving you to work on that on your own. So for my neoliberalism subtopic, I can have three pieces of evidence here. I can talk about the Bretton Woods Conference. I can talk about the creation of the World Bank and the creation of the International Monetary Fund. And my question is just going to be, why did they follow neoliberalism? kind of what's in it for the capitalist nations. And remember, I'm trying not to go down here with why did it cause economic globalization? Because that's my bigger topic. And so that would be kind of more based on leadership in general. So in terms of why did they follow neoliberalism, I can think about the context. This is post-World War II. And they're trying to recover economically you know, from the war. So I can talk about that in my small y. Then I'm going to come down here in my next topic of evidence, which was advances in technology. And my evidence can be talking about the importance of oil as a fuel for transportation, shipping and maybe planes as moving goods around, and then the communication, the stuff I had from my brainstorm. Why do companies improve technology? And that um, I think I could put to find um, you know, new markets. You know, as a way to move goods around. So now I'm going to come down to my big why. Make this purple. And why did the leadership of capitalist nations cause economic globalization? Because they are trying to expand profit. And I could also add that after World War II, K 
capitalist nations are the most powerful and the richest. And there is a Cold War element here, you know, there are communist nations, remember, during this time period. The philosophy of neoliberalism specifically excluded communist nations from this process, and it wasn't until after the fall of communism in maybe about 50 years or so after this conference. The Bretton Woods Conference is in 1947, and communism is going to collapse in oh, about 1990. And it's not until then that previously communist nations, like maybe the ones in Eastern Europe, are welcomed into this global community, which is going to further the process of globalization. And that's getting a little bit more into effect. So let's move over to the next section of the essay plan and look at the effects of globalization. So I came up with quite a few effects here, and in looking through this, I'm going to group them into two parts like I did last time. And I really am only going to focus on a few of these things. So my first part that I want to look at is this section I have here about labor migration, which is going to facilitate global economic growth. And I've got some examples here that I can use. I have three different examples of labor migration. And I also noticed when I looked at this that this labor migration I think is going to help further this global trade growth. I think there's a connection there. And so that can be my first kind of subtopic. And then over here for my second subtopic, I want to focus on this cultural thing because I think I've already got something economic happening over here with the migration. And this culture is going to need actually some more evidence. So when I looked at this, I thought, you know what? I think culture will work, but let me get some more information in here. And this is going to be on the next slide, but I can kind of show you that I could talk about movies, about clothes, about goods like cars, and that these are each examples of goods from America and Europe that become popular overseas. So my one effect, what we're going the topic sentence, is that together these things help to expand power of Western capitalist nations. So let's go to the next slide and take a look at what that would look like as far as the analysis questions. Okay, so on this slide I have my expanded power of capitalist nations. And I'm going to have a reason here, which will be connected down here to my big why. So I've got cheap labor with those examples I talked about. Why did they encourage cheap labor? And that is to foster more production. You know, the more, the less money you pay to workers, the more money you have to expand your, your factories. You know, they can open more factories. And part of that reason is because at this time there is an increase in demand. And one of the reasons there is an increase in demand is because of my next subtopic and what I've got marked here about the globalization of culture. Because these are products, even movies, which are exported. These are all exports, okay? So why did Western culture spread? Um, I would say there is a demand from consumers. And part of this has to do with um, a post-Cold War and a post-decolonization phenomenon in which residents of countries that had been kind of isolated or at least controlled by somebody else uh, are embracing this newfound independence and in some cases they're seeing products from places like America. Maybe I'm thinking most of the movies, but even the clothes. I remember that hearing that in the Cold War, a pair of Levi jeans were extremely expensive on the black market in the Soviet Union, not just because they were comfortable or whatever, but because they represented kind of that American ideal of a free society. So now for my big why, I'm looking at why did economic globalization expand the power of capitalist nations? And there's a few factors I can think about. One is uh, increasing money, okay? And the other is the influence on consumers. Um, that people are going to support the policies of Western nations. They're consuming their goods. They're working in their factories. And there's kind of a, an economic connection there that extends beyond just money and includes things like culture and politics so that 
a country like the United States or Britain or France will have an influence on the political ideas of people in other countries as well. So now on this last slide here, I just kind of have an overall outline for you to take a look at things. So this was my cause paragraph. And I had leadership of nations. Remember, I had neoliberalism and technology advances. In the essay, there's more specifics. I would have a small and a big Y for that one. And then my effect was the growing power. I had cheap labor. I had globalization of culture and a small and big Y for that one. So hopefully that helps understand the process of globalization and practice the skill of causation. Happy studying! Hey,